Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. Turn to somebody and say, G'day, mate. Good to see you in church this morning. God bless you here today. We're going to lift up and worship the name of Jesus. Amen. Are you ready for that? I want you to make visitors welcome here today. God bless you all. Have a great time. Over to Diane and the team as we sing and worship here this morning. Thank you. We're together again Just praising the Lord Good morning, Pastor Tony and Pastor Eunice. God bless you both. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is your special, special day. It is, and we just are so grateful that you are in our lives. So grateful, both of you. You mean so much. 
more than words can say. So let's say to the Lord this morning, you are beautiful beyond description. Have a seat while we sing. We're not as young as we used to be. You are beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words. Too wonderful for comprehension. Like nothing ever seen. we just want to catch a glimpse of your majesty, Lord. We want to be that people that come with hearts full of praise and thankfulness. Lord, bless each voice as it raises into your throne room this morning and let us know you are 
who you are as we worship you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. than that they said amen. and much louder than that again they said amen amen, amen. see his glory see his glory come down that's what we want isn't it that's what we want see his glory Yeah. 
your glory fill this place, Lord. To see your glory fill this place, Lord. To see your wonderful glory fill this house, O oh Lord. Oh, how precious it is. How precious. To see his glory come down. To see his glory. Sing that just one. Oh, just sing that once more. See his glory. Yes, Lord. His glory. I want you to feel his presence here this morning. Feel his presence here this morning. His glory come down. Together we will praise. Praise his name. His name. What a mo great moment to move into taking communion this morning. Please be seated. Thank you, attendants. If you begin to distribute those emblems, thank you, musicians and singers. Do such a wonderful job. In fact, let's give them a round of applause. They, they, do, a lot of, they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You just come and enjoy the music, and they're all just getting into their practice and making sure they've got that together and doing well. And I appreciate that very much. You know, we mark great occasions, don't we? Today's a great occasion where Pastor Tony and Eunice are retiring and, and or refiring, whichever you like, but, but we're, we're going to be celebrating their life today, marking it as a special day on our calendar. But we do. We often celebrate around times like this and meals. We've got some lovely cake back there later on. We will enjoy a cup of coffee and some cake and so forth. But we celebrate things like marriages and birthdays and, and uh, you know, national occasions. Uh, they're all celebrated because we want to remember good things. Thank you, Lord. Well, I tell you what, 2,000 years ago, Jesus joined with his disciples to celebrate a age-old custom of the Jewish people that began when they came out of the bondage of Egypt. Yes. It was the Passover supper. Thank you. But this particular Passover supper was different from all the others. This Passover supper, Jesus began to say, listen, the old is closing and the new is opening. Hallelujah. There is a new covenant that is coming. And he linked... The, the occasion of taking, it would have been the third cup in that, in, that ta in that table, and he took that cup of redemption. And as he took that cup of redemption, he began to say, that a new covenant is opening before you. Yes. 
Now, uh, Ernie spoke a couple of weeks ago around communion, and he talked about at the time when the, the high priest asked the, Jesus, you know, who, you know are, you this, you, are you God, basically? And he said, yes. And with that, the high priest tore his robe, and Ernie likened that to the breaking of the old new, the covenant. <clears throat> I want to suggest to you when the curtain was torn three o'clock in the afternoon in the temple, that huge big curtain was torn open. It's signifying, hey, we now have access to the holiest of holies. We have a new covenant, not one that was with, a, with goats and bulls, with, with a high priest, but now our high priest is Jesus Christ, and it is his blood, not the blood of some ordinary animal, but it is his blood. And, and to, in that time, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus took the cup, he first of all broke the bread, which you have in your hands this morning. This is a remembrance time of the body of Jesus that was given for you and I. That, that piece of bread represents his body. It's broken into pieces. And so as you hold that piece of bread, it speaks of Jesus' body. And by faith this morning, I want you to believe you're touching the hand of Jesus as you hold that. And then he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. We live under a new covenant. We live in the covenant of Jesus Christ as our high priest, as our saviour. And we have immediate access into the throne room of God. Not the old, now the new has come. And this morning as we take communion, we remember and recognise the new covenant that we all live under. Let us eat and drink together in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Precious is your name. Thank you, Lord. We remember and we acknowledge you. Amen. 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 Right at this moment, as we've taken communion now, I want you to believe for, for not only spiritual health, but physical health in your bodies in men and women all over this place. As many of you here this morning, I'm sure you've all got ailments. If I asked you how you're going, you'd give the Aussie thing, I'm all right, mate. Yeah. But in actual fact, you could probably give me a list that's 20 pages long. <laughs> Lord, you know how to heal our bodies. You know how our bodies work. He designed your body. He designed it with all the antibodies that need to run around, all the bloodstream that needs to flow in the right places to heal the broken bones and the, and, the, and, the, and the flus and all the rest of the bits and pieces. I want you this morning to see his hand touching your body and allowing your body to heal and to be made whole. In, in, in your physical body, I'm thinking right now, of course in your spiritual body, but in your physical body, get that rid of that, that flu to be fought off and driven back into the pit from where it came. The busted muscles, the, the sore backs, the, the headaches, the, the eye strain, the, the, all of the bits and pieces that we could go on with. Lord, I thank you this morning as we come before you that healing might flow in this church here today, that the men and women of this church would know your healing. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a round of applause. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Glory to God. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Now that I've got you smiling, we're going to take up the offering. <laughs> Pastor Ann Harley's here. She's going to just put in, she's going to write the whole checkbook out and drop it in. So, actually, we don't have checkbooks anymore, do we? Chris, <laughs> credit, credit card. Give Tony the, um, the pin number and he will sort it out the rest, all right? But let's, let's take up our offering this morning. Thank you, attendance. You know, I know many of you give online, and that's really appreciated. I, that's fantastic that you do that. I'm just going to drive the cameraman mad as I move over here to get my notes. But you know, as, as, um, it is so wonderful that the, the faithfulness of men and women in this camp to be able to give offerings like this. And uh, if you're visiting here today, that, that's fine. You double tithe for you guys. <laughs> And if you're from Calvary, it's got to be four times the... <coughs> Praise God. But, but a lot of you give online, and that's wonderful. That's a great way to do it. Set it up in your bank account. Pray about how much you should give and set that in motion, as Diane and I do, 
every, for every Sunday. Hey, now listen, you've got a list of things that are happening in the church. You've got all your notices there. I want to recommend to you the Tuesday morning prayer meeting at 10 o'clock that happens right here in this church. It's an inspiring time. Amen. And it's just great to be here. What, what else we got happening? I think we've got the, um, the, oh, the Wednesday night Bible study with Pastor Tony is absolutely sensational. Yeah. You've stepped into a whole new gear there, Pastor Tony, and uh, are doing quite well. That's great stuff. He needed to hear that after 56 years of ministry. He needs to hear that he's doing all right. And, of course, you've got the Women's Fellowship every Friday morning at 10 o'clock. And uh, I had to buy another car because Diane's coming to the ladies' meeting and I didn't have a car, so I had to buy another. It's costing me a fortune. <laughs> Anyhow, it's worth it. <laughs> hey, but this morning, this is a very special Sunday. Um, as you know, it's a transition from Pastor Tony and Eunice have been pastoring you as, a, as pastors to Diane and I taking over the, if you like, the, uh, you know, the lead coach role. And uh, that, that's, that, that's good. But it's, it's great here to, for us to think about Pastor Tony and Eunice uh, and, and the ministry that they have given over the many, many years. And I'm sure it's going to go on, but just in a different phase right now. Yeah. Um, Tony was 23 years of age when he graduated from the Assemblies of God Commonwealth Bible College in Brisbane. That's, uh, what, about 1968, I think it was, when you... Were you married by that stage? Oh, someone give Tony a microphone. <laughs> th th this is... Now, hang on a minute. No, does anyone else want the microphone? <laughs> because I, I, I said to Pastor Tony as we started the service, I said, I'm going to give you the microphone, and if I make a mistake, you can correct me. He said, there'll be many, Ross. <laughs> I said, thanks for your confidence, mate. But, <clears throat> in fact, uh, 1968... Were you married then? Not, not married yet, but you'd met your bride. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mate, turn, turn, turn Tony's volume up a little bit on that handheld mic. That'd be great. You know, um, but while he was in Bible college, he began pastoring a, a church at Graceville in, uh, in Brisbane. By the way, the Commonwealth Bible College was all flooded out, I think, in 19... 74. 1974. I was in Brisbane at the time, but I didn't know, didn't know the Lord then. But uh, the Bible college was totally flooded and eventually moved to Katoomba in New South Wales. But uh, right now he was there, pastored the church in, uh, in uh, Graceville, and then moved to Victoria where he pastored for a couple of years in Ballarat, and then Ridge Haven in South Australia, uh, Reservoir in uh, Victoria. So these, as the years rolled on, somewhere in there you got married. Eunice, you found him and decided that he should get married. <laughs> He found you. That, okay. So when, when, what year did you get married? 1970. Pick, pop, pop, up a, pop up a photo. Come on. Oh, dear. We got... <laughs> that was 1966. 1966. Get the next... Click on the next one for a second. 1966. Look at them there, eh? A couple of young kids, aren't they? We are. As I mean, we all were. were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the next slide there, the, the slide people are going crazy up the back up there. They're trying to get rid of everything. There we go. Look at this. Uh, that was 1983. 1983. Mm. That's when you... Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. In Sydney I was, then. I was going to say your hair was, it was a few shades darker. And mm. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Yes. Hey? Brings back fond memories, hey? I'll bet. Now, I've got here that you were the, the founder of Northside Christian College. Is that right? Mm. Is that in Brisbane? Melbourne. Melbourne, Northside Christian College in Brisbane. No, and, in, in Melbourne, Melbourne, sorry. <clears throat> and you're the, 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 what about in the Commonwealth Bible College in Katoomba? Were you the founder of that or was, uh, were you, you were there as a lecturer and a dean to the students? Yes, both of those things. And then the chairman of the board. Uh, that's, uh, so that's our major, that's our Commonwealth Bible College in, up in Katoomba. It was a, a magnificent old building. If you actually ever went there, the students hated it because it was drafty and wind would blow through all the cracks in the windows and, and so forth. And, uh, but it was an old hotel, I think. A, a Guest house. But uh, you were one of the major lecturers mm -hmm. at that Commonwealth Bible College. So a great number of our pastors that, are, uh, that came on stream were there because of Pastor Tony and Eunice uh, teaching them and encouraging them. I say Eunice because in a Bible college, even though Pastor Tony would be up front being the dean of it, 
Eunice would be behind the scenes, with all, particularly with the young girls that were going through Bible college, and help them through there, helping them through issues. I know that that goes on, and, and that's just as important as what happens in the lecture theatres of a Bible college, because most of those Bible colleges, like Katoomba, was a live-in type environment. Now, he went on to then to uh, Petersham, which is a suburb of Sydney, and he took on a church there in 1982 and, in fact, stayed there for 16 years and saw that church grow to over 1,500 people. Tell us a little bit about that time as you went to Peterson. It was a fairly small church to start with, wasn't it? Well, it, no, not terribly small. It was a wonderful church. It was very traditional. It was very Pentecostal, which was great. And we had a wonderful pastor that had been there for 52 years. Wow. And so I followed him and God spoke to him about me. God spoke to me about them. And so that's how it evolved. And we went there very, very <coughs> unsure. We weren't unsure about whether God had sent us. We were unsure whether the people would like us because that pastor had been there 52 years. And uh, he was a very wonderful friend before that, so we knew him well, and the whole of the fellowship in Australia knew him well. And we spent a lot of time in prayer, and then God began to do something. And the church in the morning was about 120, and it was about 85 at night, very consistent. And that was the, that was the secret of that church. They were very faithful church people mm -hmm. and faithful to the Lord. And uh, we ended up with 62 different nationalities wow. from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, from the islands of the sea, places I'd never heard of, like a place called Niue. And uh, we had from everywhere. And uh, we had uh, from Nigeria, we had them from... Well, you know where they all came from. Samoa, Angola. Uh, it was wonderful. And yet we all fitted in. I, I was there at that church about um, uh, probably about 12, 13 years ago, and it's still the same. Mm. You've got the whole Italian section over here, mm. and then you've got the, you know, the, the, the mafia. No, you've got the... You know. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, it was really, you hear all these different languages being spoken out while you're having a cup of coffee, and I'm thinking we're speaking in tongues out here, you know. But it was all different languages and different nationalities. And, uh, but many people in ministry today, as I get around and they talk about Pastor Tony Hallow, and uh, we, they all say, oh, I remember him from Petersham. But then he left Petersham. Uh, we've got the next slide, by the way. For the, um, we're, we're going on. We sort of jump in age here a little bit, and um, we've got a few slides. This is probably the Townsville era. I'm not sure what, what date this is taken right now. But uh, Tony came to Townsville to take over at Calvary. In fact, when I arrived here in Townsville in uh, 1998, Pastor Tony has already, was already established as the uh, Calvary pastor, and he remained there for 10 years and was a wonderful asset for me. As I was pastoring over in, uh, in Burnda Street and he was over the other side with Calvary, my church was very small compared to Calvary, of course. But the number of times I had things to have to deal with being a basically a younger man in ministry and certainly many years younger in ministry um, um, conditions and so forth, it was wonderful to have Pastor Tony and Eunice and to be able to talk to him and he never once turned me away, he always talked to me and always gave me great wisdom in how to manage various issues that happen in church. Amen. You know the church would run smoothly and effectively and no one would have any <laughs> grumbles and you'd never have any worries, would you? That, that would be hard to imagine, I know, but Pastor Tony would help me through those. But Calvary, uh, for 10 years where he uh, not only ran the church but also Rima Bible College and the Calvary School. Um, he, he then, uh, do you just have got some more slides there of, the, of these guys. It's very important that we understand, you know, as, as pastors, sometimes we're the ones on the platform, but our wives are right there with us. And uh, here's Eunice strangling Tony because he said something <laughs> inappropriately, and she's about to put a, a, a neck lock on him. <laughs> Pick on the next slide. Have you got another slide there? Paul Abilio put these slides together for us, but he's as crook as a dog today. He's going to send him home to have a sleep. And uh, here's, here's Tony showing who's the authority figure in the in the household because Eunice lets him. 
Wonderful shots. Any another one there? Praise God. There. Great photo. That must have been some conference somewhere. I think that was on a trip, on a, a cruise. Oh, a cruise. Yes, we've got our little badges around us so that we know who we are. So people wouldn't, you wouldn't get lost. <laughs> you know, you put tags on the kids so that the staff know who they are. And... <clears throat> okay, praise God. You know, but then he, um, he tried to retire in 2007. And, of course, Eunice kept on contacting people all over the place, saying, hey, why don't you come around our place on Sunday if you're not doing anything? And pretty soon she had 10, 20, 30, 40 people in their lounge room at home having church. And with that, uh, a group of people, they got together. And, of course, this is the establishment of what we have here today as Townsville Worship Centre. Out of those home group meetings around the, uh, I was going to say around the campfire, around, around his lounge chair and piano at home, uh, we all moved into here. And here we are today as Townsville Worship Centre. But you know, over all of that ministry years, and that's about 50 something, I don't know, or 56 years of ministry, in amongst all that, of course, he's had a lot of experience working with radio, and here in uh, Townsville, used the community radio 4KIG, and uh, for 22 years, brought in a gospel message through that particular channel, and is still doing it today, of course, with um, with his uh, you know online broadcasts that you can see every every week. Over those years of ministry, not only was that happening, but he's, he was also heading up a lot of missionary works all over the place. And particularly that I know of is in Israel and the Ukraine, where uh, he can probably correct me here, but Israel, I think he's, Tony's been to Israel about 30 plus times and into the Ukraine about 30 or 40 times and uh, was there when Chernobyl, in fact, uh, melted down. He was just in a, a town not far from there where all the panic and everything was happening while Chernobyl is melting down and, and, and burning up. So when he came back to Australia, they had to do radiation tests on him. That's why he glows in the dark now, you know. <coughs> but, uh, you know, you think it's the anointing, but, you know... <laughs> Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, there's um, uh, a great, great missionary story. By the way, the ABC radio did an interview with him that goes for about 15 or 16 minutes on drive time just a few days ago. And if you go to Abilio's Facebook page, you can have a listen to it. It is absolutely well worth listening to. In fact, uh, it, it is it's brilliant. I would love to listen to it for another hour or so because the two just interreacted and Pastor Tony uh, just brought out some wonderful stuff. He's got a great way of telling stories and things. Um, tell us, just, just sort of pull that together a little bit for me. What other towns, what other city, where have you been in that whole missionary work? Because I think your worldwide missionary stuff is, is off the Richter scale. And uh, I enjoyed going to Israel with you a year ago. That was wonderful. But... Well, yes, Israel. We've been to Russia and Romania. And we've been to Iran and walked the streets of Tehran and visited the persecuted church in all those places. We've been to all throughout Asia, Vietnam and uh, Thailand and India and Sri Lanka, which we loved, and uh, so many other places, Malaysia, and had the wonderful privilege of leading that young man that was to be hanged for drug um, problems, uh, lead, led him to Jesus uh, because the Lord told us to go. I think it can be said, and we say it before the Lord, we only did what we were told to do. We never woke up one morning and said, oh, I think we'll do this, or, oh, I think we can do that. I never did that. I've never done that. And in fact, I'm a bit of a slow learner. But I have felt, we've felt, both of us have felt, and that's the joy of our lives together. We do everything together. And we always have also loads of people that helped us. We never did anything on our own. Not a single thing. From that first little church in Graceville to this one, we've always had and always relied on and always trusted in and been thankful for those that helped us. And, of course, the prime helper, and there were many, 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 I could name their names, people like Owen Ellis, people like Philip Pierce, people like Fred Lancaster, so many people, so many people, people like Rod Nichols, people like, well, Abilio. We've had 35 years of friendship 
and 33 years of working together in a partnership which has been satisfying, it's been heartwarming, and I couldn't have done any of the things that we have apparently done without the woman I love and the man who has been a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's all because of working together. You can't do anything on your own. You're not supposed to. And, of course, the grace of God has been upon us. In Petersham, we had three gifts given to us that we never asked for, never expected, never, in fact, four gifts. Number one, the church gave us a home, a beautiful, beautiful home that they sent us out to go and choose. And we chose it for them, a beautiful home on the side of a, a hill overlooking part of Sydney. And then one day the church said, we've got news for you, we're giving that house to you. We on the board all own our home. If you leave us in the purposes of God, you've got nothing. And so we're giving it to you. So this now multi-million dollar home became ours. How wonderful that was. Mm. And then there were three priceless gifts. One was Tom. The other one was Matthew, and the third was Christopher. And Matthew's with the Lord, and uh, now he was uh, such a sweet, sweet boy. Tom was the brains of the family and told us that every morning, and uh, he still tells us. And, uh, and out of that, we have now seven grandchildren, and... Uh, just wonderful to see them serving the Lord. Not about a little Noah, he's only 10 months old, but uh, he certainly knows how to put his hands in the air, so that's good. God has been good to us. And you know, there was a song we used to sing many years ago. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Just trust and do obey, and that's all we've done. Praise That's God. all we've done. Praise God. <laughs> but today, Pastor Tony is, uh, is he, although he may not be up here doing running church, what he is doing is playing what I would call therapeutic music. And that's a, that's a word that probably was uh, mixed around, but therapeutic music in the hospitals, both in, the, in the, uh, our uh, university hospital and in the Marta hospital. It's been incredibly well received and they're begging him to do more and more hours there as he plays. The entire staff in those places gets to listen. Um, Tony, Pastor Tony, what are the, the um, areas where you play music? Well, the latest is, and it was confirmed on Friday, that we're going into the foyer or the lobby, whatever you call it, this great big cavernous <coughs> uh, entry to the university hospital over here. And the board has been sending down, which to me is amusing and it's very heartwarming. Every Friday they send a member of the board or a board representative down to assure me that they want me to come there. So we're starting there, not this coming Tuesday, Tuesday week. And uh, that's all set up. We also play twice a week uh, in the palliative care unit not only for those that are patients and some of whom are dying, uh, but also for their family, their friends, the staff from the director right through to the medical staff, the catering staff, the administrative staff. I've made some wonderful friends there and I've seen things that perhaps uh, can't be shared, but some wonderful, wonderful things. Mm. So Tuesday we're at the University Hospital and then uh, at the then um, Wednesday we're doing podcast teaching and the online Bible school. Thursday uh, or Bible study, I should say. Thursday we're at the again we'll be at the uh, university hospital. Uh, Billy has got to pack everything up and then pop it in the van, and then we're over to the Martyr, and we're all day on Friday. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I'm really out of Eunice's hair, not in the way, <laughs> not sitting around and telling her what to do and getting in the way. I just feel 
God said, you're still in the ministry, son. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Just Amen. in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor Tony began his uh, piano playing at the age of seven. By the age of about 12 or 13, he was actually on in the 1960s on in, uh, in television and the theatre and so forth and uh, was very much a sought-after piano player in that, uh, that young world, if you like, of uh, piano players. And, uh, and so he's, uh, he began that life there, right? The curtain would come apart and there would be... Pastor Tony <clears throat> playing away as the camera zoomed in on him. And uh, that's, that's a very interesting story, I'm sure. If you're talking to him sometime, uh, talk to him about his younger days in that. There. But then about the age of 16 or so, he come to know the Lord at a Billy Graham crusade. And uh, I think, uh, correct me. 13. 13. 13. 13. Thank you. Thank you for that correction. 13 years of age, he come to know the Lord at a Billy Graham crusade. And from there began to feel the call of God on his life and uh, knew that he was going to go into the ministry. Not particularly uh, religious around the family environment, but nevertheless, the power of God had touched him, and he made a real difference to his family over a, great, over a period of time. And that is so wonderful. And today, his piano playing has, uh, has just uh, gone on and on. That's why we have a grand piano right here in our, in our, in our church. You want something to add to that, Pastor Tony? Oh, no. <laughs> That's just, wonderful. I've just been thinking... If I suddenly die, he's got to lead the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> he makes me look so good. <laughs> Why don't you play the song, Pastor Tony? Sorry? Play for it. Play for you. Yeah, come on, Pastor Tony. He's the boss. <laughs> yeah. Just take your time. You've got two minutes to play. <laughs> but play however you like, but whatever you like. But just play this song. No. <laughs> This one, see his Ben Natoko is our state uh, president of the, uh, the ACC, Australian Christian Churches. And uh, when, I, when Ben heard that Pastor Tony was retiring, he said, I would, I would love to do a thank you message. And let's just run this. Turn the sound up on it, guys, and thank you. Hi, Townsville Worship Centre. It's Ben Natoko here from ACC Queensland. And I just want to say a hearty congratulations to Pastor Tony and Eunice Hello. Thank you so much for your servant to, uh, servanthood to Townsville over the last 27 years and a big thank you on behalf of our movement for all that you've done for the Kingdom of God. I know that God is opening new doors for you as you step into a new phase of your ministry, but I just want to thank you so much for the incredible work that you've done in this past season. Also to Ross and Di Taylor, I want to say congratulations to you as well. You guys have been faithful servants to the city of Townsville and I know that you will continue to do so as you take over leadership of the church. So God bless you, and thank you so much for all that you do. Wonderful. Yeah. And our, um, our national president, I ran into uh, Wayne Elkhorn uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was down in Brisbane for some other things, just happened to be at the same meeting as him, and uh, grabbed hold of Wayne. And, uh, and uh, he, he knew that I was already taking over the church before I did, I think. <coughs> but anyhow, he, uh, he has a, uh, a short message to, here to go. Hello, everybody at Townsville Worship Centre, and a special hello to Pastor Tony and Eunice. I hear there's a party going on. I hear there's a moment of celebration. 
for all you are and all you've done in Jesus' name. You know, 56 years of effective ministry is no small thing. And I'm hearing right now that, you know, you still haven't even reached your 80th birthday. It is incredible, Tony. I, I love you. I'm grateful for you. The people there gathered may not know, but you were my Sunday school teacher when I was eight years old in a little church that my mum and dad were pioneering or helping establish in the northwest suburbs of Brisbane. And you came along and literally left a mark upon my life for which I'm always grateful. In recent times, I've been in Townsville and Petersham where you've led great churches and just impacted so many lives. But today, it's not about that. It's about you. And we want to say thank God for you. We thank God for all you've done, all you are. And I know you're going to continue to inspire people and continue to point people to a living and loving God. So from Lynn and I, from the leadership and your peers in the ACC, we stop, we salute you, and thank God for you. And I trust you know how much you're loved and how much you're blessed. So have a great day today. We love you. God bless. <laughs> I wonder if I can invite both of you to come up. We've got some gifts we'd like to give to you, and uh, we'd like to be able to just pray for you. And come on, come on, bring, bring, bring the, bring the young fellow with you. The young boy. Yeah. <clears throat> These are some gifts that we've put aside for both of you. And uh, perhaps we'll, we'll, ju we'll just leave them sit here. How's that sound? Yes, that's that's sounds, uh, and another a lot of gifts there. Make sure you unwrap them carefully because there's little, there's little gift cards in there too. And there's also a, a card of thank you. This is, this is not like, a re I didn't want a retirement card. I, I wanted a celebration, a thank you card for the ministry. That's, and so that's getting around the place here somewhere. And I hope you've all signed it. And... Uh, Rosalind is my uh, card policeman, and she's, uh, she's making sure everyone's written something in that card, and you will you'll, you'll get that later. Thank you. Oh, we're posing for the photos now. <laughs> yeah. right, we've got that at the right. Turn around now and face the people. Come on. No good side on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to honour this couple today for the incredible ministry that they have had and the influence they've had on so many people, including Diane and I, and uh, people that we can look up to and say, you know, they've gone through ministry years with all the pressures and so forth and survived all of that. You know, when you become a senior pastor, you just get a big target drawn on you. And, uh, you know, the enemy wants to have a go in every way he can. And he has with this couple, but he, they've walked through that with great integrity and with great strength and power. Father, we thank you for this couple this morning. Lord, that as they have wonderfully moved through ministry, that they would continue in all that you have for them, that they might be evergreen in what they do. Lord, let, their, let their, their ministry of whether it be for piano playing or the ministry of just a beautiful telephone call from Eunice, who's always, her voice is always so soothing and smooth. Lord, I thank you that you would bless them abundantly and cause their ways to be open before you. I know, Lord, that they just want to do what you've called them to do. And uh, they, they, I can hear you saying, well done good and faithful servants. Amen. 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 So don't forget, I'm not sure where that card has got to, Rosalind. You're, you're in charge, Rosalind. You're, you're being paid the big bucks to handle that. You doing well? If I had a um, remote control for my PowerPoint, that would be really wonderful. There it is there. Thank you. Put that PowerPoint of mine up. Thank you. You know, um, I rummaged around in the cupboard the other day. I'm having a cup of tea and I pulled out a, uh, you know, one of those little cheese and bicky packs, you know, that are all done up in the pressure, little pressure packs. And I, I pulled it open and thought, oh, that'll be nice. I'll have that with a cup of tea. <clears throat> Ripped the top off. And, uh, and I thought, that, that's funny. The cheese is looking a little yellow looking. And, and then when I bit into it, I went, oh, my, oh, it was dreadful. It was it's something had all gone. And then I looked at the best before date. 
and realized that it was only about 12 months out of date. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, some th- sometimes when things get to the best before date, they mean best before, and after that, thrown in the bin. Uh, about 12 months ago, I was walking one morning, and I was feeling a bit like I'd passed my best before date. Uh, I was just out walking, and I was just having a, you know, just thinking, oh, well, you know, what do I do now, and how do I, you know, should, is there anything more for me to do, Lord, and, you know, ah, uh, yeah, I'm going to just sit down and retire and sit in the corner and, you know, wait till someone says something nice about me as they lower me into the ground and I go to glory, you know, <laughs> hello. <laughs> But, you know, as, I, as I'm walking along, I, I felt the words of Isaiah spring into my thinking. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And I, and I felt the call of God to just to simply look up. And right in front of me is this big dead tree, which I'd been contemplating was a bit like me. You know, branches fallen off. <laughs> Stuff that used to be really good and gave a lot of shade is now pretty, you know, dead and grey looking. Well, you know, a bit like my hair. <clears throat> you know, instead of once looking like Elvis Presley, now I'm looking more like Pastor. No, I was going to say Pastor Tone. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> He's got a lot more hair than I have. I can tell you. <laughs> but you know, as, as and then I looked up into this tree, and, and my eyes. Well, I don't know why I hadn't seen it before. I looked right up, and there, in the top of this tree, is this beautiful green foliage on one branch. And I felt God say to me right there, there's one more thing for you to do. You know, I got home from that walk and I walked into the house and Diane says, I've been praying, you know, and I feel like I can hear God saying there's one more thing for us to do. I couldn't believe it. I thought, well, hello, (laughs) maybe there is. Well, it was only a few months later I actually had a severe car accident and could have been killed. That was in 9th of December and uh, last year. Ran into a tree, the car exploded all around me, it busted up all my ribs and so forth. But, you know, I survived. You look at the car and you think, how could anyone survive that? But I basically survived very well. Here I am today, standing before you. And I know many have said, you know, oh, maybe you survived that because God has something more for you to do, Ross. Well, anyhow, just only a couple of weeks ago, having lunch down at Faster Pastor, as we do after church, and Pastor Tony just nonchalantly just walks up to me. He says, Ross, he says, I'm going to retire in a couple of weeks. He says, would you take over the church? And I just said, oh, yeah, okay. Went on order be lunch. <laughs> Anyhow, the next thing I know, it's all broadcast out there. Ross has taken over from the church. And, you know, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know, I'm retired. You know, I don't need this. And that's me. But, you know, the love for people. I thought... The shepherd needs, this, this church needs a shepherd. I was, there's, a, there's a love for the people and I feel your love. And it began to permeate into my heart. But nevertheless, I still had this, okay, well, I'll keep the chair warm until we find someone that can, you know, a bit younger that can pastor the church. And I'm flying down to Brisbane and I'm reading a book. If anyone's interested, it was by uh, Carolyn uh, Cossetti and it was called The Shadow of the Storm. It's about a woman that came out of, uh, out of Egypt. She's a 20-year-old woman and she's traveling with the, in, in, with the 3 million Jews that are in the wilderness. It's, it's, it's like a personal story. It's just a story, but nevertheless, it's biblical and uh, rated, based. <clears throat> and I'm reading that and it comes to the line where she talks about Moses having an encounter with God at the burning bush at the age of 80. Now, I can't really explain, I can't really sedge that that to you as to how that impacted me, but somehow that impacted my spirit. And immediately I could hear God say, don't just warm the chair, take over the reins. And, and immediately I closed that book up and, and, and just sat back in my chair and closed my eyes on that plane. And I said, Lord, I, I, I'm sorry for thinking shallow like that but I'm here today to tell you that I've taken on the reins of what we're doing here right now however long that takes I've come out of the you know Johnny Farnham's had more more comebacks than anyone we know well I've I've retired three times and now been refired four times so this is the fourth time and and uh, well we're right there with good company King David was anointed three times 
He was anointed as a shepherd boy and took over a couple of, you know, and then later on he took over a couple of tribal groups and then eventually took over the entire nation of Israel as the king of Israel. But he had three different anointings. Of course, there's always marvellous days in your, in, your, in your time. We've marked some for Pastor Tony and Eunice. I think it's Mark Twain that says, there's really two great days in your life. The day that you're born and the day that you discover why. You know, I, I, it's a marvellous thing when you hear the voice of God say, right, this is a, this is a project I've got for you, Ross. This is, this is a day. And that becomes, whoa, okay, this is the day the Lord has made. And so I stand before you today as one who's prepared to take on what God has called me to do, to be your pastor. And I can't help but think of Jesus standing up in the early stages of his ministry. He's been anointed, he's been baptized in the River Jordan, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he comes back to his hometown of Nazareth and he stands up and he reads from the, from the passage of Isaiah, which is something that I think we need to hear this morning, when he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In fact, if I go to there, you can have it there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Now, I don't just take that on board as my, my, my mantra, if you like, my mission statement, but I believe that that's the mission statement of this church. This church is to preach good news to the poor. This, first of all, the Spirit of the Lord needs to be upon us. Without the Spirit of the Lord, we're just a bunch of people having a nice time, have a cup of tea and a bit of cake and go home. We've had a wonderful time. You can do that at the local sewing circle, the local book reading club. Go and play table tennis with a group of people. But here we are in church with the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. You know, all the way through Scripture, <clears throat> when the Spirit of the Lord came upon people, you saw incredible things begin to happen. You had insight, wisdom, and, and, and you had understanding, counsel, power, and might, and strength. Paul would say to the Ephesians, when, you know, don't be dissipated with wine and, and alcohol, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and sing to each other, sing together, sing by yourselves, and think, sing with thanksgiving in your heart and in unity. Have a look at it sometime in the book of Ephesians. That's what it means to be a church filled and overflowing with the Holy Spirit, with the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Let us be men and women who can praise and sing, not just speak in tongues and prophesy. That's just, that's just a few of the things we can do. You know, move in miracles and, and, and signs and wonders and so forth. We've got all the gifts of the Spirit. We understand those. We also need to have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, self-control. You know, those things, you've got to have those in balance. And we as a church, anointed with the Spirit of God, will see those things happening in our lives. This is a new season for this church. Amen. Pastor Tony and Eunice have raised up and the faithful people in this church who have given faithfully and set it up. I don't have to raise money for chairs. They're already here or for a piano or for air conditioning or for a building. It's all here. Praise God, what a foundation to start on. Yes, amen. So I, I feel incredibly privileged to take on this church. Now, I will bring a different flavor. I will add to that flavor. I'm a new coach. You might have had Wayne Bennett coaching you. Now you've got Ross Taylor coaching you. You might have had Tony, Tony and Eunice coaching, but now you've got me. And so, I, you know, there might be some little different, different things that you might have to do. I might tell you to go and sit in that chair over there. Or sit in that. You go, I don't want to sit in that chair. <laughs> tell someone that cares. No, no. <laughs> Diane says, you can't say that, Ross. No, you can't. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, just delete that. <laughs> Beep. Okay. I want the young people of this church to begin to rise up to do stuff. There's got to be young people that are there. I'm 77 years of age in a couple of weeks' time. There's got to be some young people. Hello, young people back there behind the sound desk. Bless you for your ministry. Thank you so much. Kaziah here is going to be doing communion next month. Yeah, right here on the platform. You need to give her all the support she's got. Don't sit there and say, what are these young kids doing? There? They'll be doing it. 
way after you and I are gone, I can tell you. And we better, you better get used to that. Okay? Praise God. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. We need to be, as Paul would say, we need to be filled with thanksgiving and cooperation with each other, loving each other, moving together as, as one. Not, not just I, me, but together. And together we're going to have some fun doing this. All right? Church me, we need to have life and life more abundantly. Amen? Yes. Jesus didn't have us, want us to have some dour, dead in the wall, you know, oh, well, well, you know, let's just sit around and, you know, kumbaya, my Lord. You know. <laughs> no, no, he called us to be powerful in, in, in our life giving. We need to have a life source, amen? amen? I'm looking around at some of you now and you're probably about my age, but you need to have some, look up there, there's some green bushes still up there, I can tell you. You're still above ground, let the green bushes grow, Amen. You can't say that either, can you? No, 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 no. no. I'm being critiqued here already. I told Diane, don't critique me until Wednesday. I don't want to know what I did wrong on Sunday afternoon. I'm too sensitive. I'm a sensitive sort of guy. You know, we have, us, us males have fragile egos. You ladies have already worked that out, you know. You've got to make us think like we're 10 foot tall and bulletproof. In actual fact, we're real softies. You know, if you, ladies, let me tell you something. If, you, if your husband spreads out the table and makes tea for you and he puts out the nice china and the nice silverware and he cooks up a nice meal, he might have gone down the shop and bought it, but he looks like he's cooking it in the kitchen. You just sit back and say, this is most wonderful, darling. This is beautiful. Don't ever criticise. It would have been nicer if this had been a bit saltier. <laughs> no, don't say that. But he, won't, he, won't, he won't do it again for another 12 months. He'll be shattered. Harry's got very sensitive ego. I, him and I went up to Cape York together, didn't we, mate? I let him do, do all the cooking. I just loaded the stuff with as much pepper, pepper it would cover anything. And <laughs> I put on about three kilos because all he cooked up was bacon and eggs for breakfast, about a whole tray of it for about six people. We had a good time, though. Praise God. Not only that, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, but we need to preach good news to the poor. Not preach conspiracy theories and all sorts of rubbish that's out there, but preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. Believe in him. He's the son of God, that he died on a cross and rose again. That's what you're going to preach. That's what you're going to share with the community. You get out there on Facebook. Get rid of all your conspiracy theories and stuff and just begin to show Jesus and to show the love of Jesus to a community. And you watch the difference it makes. Don't grab your neighbour who's, you know, into some other, some secret lodge or something, or, you know, he's into some judo thing and he's got some Buddha statue in his, in his lounge room. Don't hammer him about that stuff. Just preach about Jesus. He'll throw the old rotten steak away and take on the good one if, it's, grabs, if the Holy Ghost grabs him. Amen. Thank you, thank you for that. I've got one person in the church in here. <laughs> the second thing, not only we have the Spirit of the Lord upon us and to preach good news to the poor, but we need to proclaim freedom. There is true freedom in no other except Jesus. You don't get freedom by doing good works. There are some religious groups out there that have got to do good works all the time. You know, if they're not knocking on doors every day, then they're not, probably not going to earn their salvation. It's rubbish. We, earn our, we don't have to earn our salvation. Jesus has done that for us. All we have to do is accept what he's done for us. And then from that, we will want to do good works. Proclaim freedom, freedom we have in Jesus. The next thing we have is not only do we have the Spirit of the Lord upon us to preach good news to the poor, proclaim freedom, but also recovery of sight to the blind. Who knows that before I was saved I was blind, but now I can see. In my, up to I was, I was saved when I was 31 years of age. The 14th of December 1978, in fact, my eyes were open for the first time and I suddenly saw that, the, first of all, I saw that the Word of God was powerful. Then I saw, you know, of course I saw that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and I invited Him into my life. Absolutely, it was like you'd pull back curtains in a darkened room. Yeah. You know, I was stumbling around in the dark. Have you ever stumbled around in the dark when the power's gone off in your house? And you don't realise it, but when normally when power's on, you have little little lights. You'll have the, the little charger. Will be a little tiny green light that'll be on. Well, you know the toilet light down there. There'll be 
a slither of light come under the hallway or something, you know, and they'll give you some bearings. But when it's totally dark, you stumble around. I was in that place the other day when our power had all gone off and I, stumbled, I was just wishing, now where is that little, tiny little green light on the charger? And that gives me a bearing. And then I, otherwise I stumble and fall over Diane in bed and she... <coughs> Don't go, oh, you can't go there in church either, no, no. <clears throat> the recovery of sight to the blind. By the way, I've just been reading a book about a, 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 a man from Nepal, right up near the Himalayas, Dr. Sanduk Ruit, who was uh, also in cahoots with Fred Hollows with eye cataracts. Both him and Fred Hollows had um, made eye cataract operations simple, and affordable for everyone. He has done hundreds of thousands of cataract operations. It's an absolute mind-bending what he has done in terms. If you ever want to read the book, it's called The Barefoot Surgeon. Because when he's operating, he just has bare feet so he can feel the pedals that he's working with his microscopes and so forth. And he's able to do a cataract operation in about seven minutes. And people recover their sight the next day. You know, it is, and he, and he's, and he has, he makes his own lenses now. He's got a whole lens factory, and he makes his own lenses, and he can do the whole job for maybe a couple of dollars. So Fred Hollows did it in Australia, and Fred Hollows teamed up with this guy, saw the value in him, took him into his home in Australia, taught him up what he knew. He went back to Nepal, and has today tens of thousands of surgeons around the world use his practice, and it's an amazing story. The barefoot, he came right from the, from the actual foothills of the Himalayas, had to walk and walk for days and days and days just to get to a boarding school at the age of six with his father and then stayed in a boarding school and then the, the story is an amazing story as the man is alive today Fred Hollows has passed away but Fred Hollows said this it's obscene to let people go blind when they don't have to and it is, should be that should be our mantra within the church you know it's obscene that people out there in the world are going blind spiritually blind when we can bring the good news, open their eyes, and oh, what a difference. How many have found a difference when they accepted Christ? Suddenly their eyes were open, and now you look on the other side and you think, why, why did I think that was crazy? Now I understand it. Once I was blind, but now I can see. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, somebody give me a hallelujah. hallelujah. To set the oppressed free. Twelve years ago... I was pastoring in Bega, little place you might have heard it from the cheese, beautiful rural town. I'm pastoring there. A young couple, uh, a, younger, a younger man and his wife came into our church and had been in the church for some time, and uh, a, few, a few weeks anyhow. I, I, I announced that I was going to have a Bible study in my home, and, uh, and on that particular night, only he and his wife turned up. And I said, well, you know, the Bible study is going to be a bit, bit lame with only just the two of us. Let's have a cup of coffee. And I really wanted to just find out where he was at spiritually, both he and his wife. Over the cup of coffee, I said, you know, uh, have you got any issues that I can pray for? And uh, just out of the blue, just like that, the Spirit of God touched his life. And he said, uh, I'm an alcoholic. Right there and then, the Spirit of God said, pray for him to deliverance and set him free. Set the oppressed free. With that, I laid hands on him. Believe for God, not only to set him free from alcohol, but also the drugs that he was involved with. So set him free from all of those addictions. And right there and then, he was set free. The, set the oppressed free. Today, today, this man is here in our service today. I want you to meet Daryl over here. Stand up, Daryl. He's now a pastor in the Assemblies of God <clears throat> in Victoria, serving the Lord, him and his wife working with the Salvation Army, helping drug-addicted people be set free. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Praise God. And finally... Not only do we have the Spirit of the Lord's upon us to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom, recovery of sight to the blind, set the oppressed free, but also to announce the season of the Lord's favour. This is a year of the Lord's favour. Let us be, let this year unfold to a wonderful year of the Lord's favour. This season that we're in right now. You know, you've got me as your pastor. I tell you, I, I've had tremendous success 
in taking churches from a few handful of people. When I went to Bega, I had two families. Darren and Penny came along, that made three. Pretty soon when I left, there was about 20 or 30 people that were there. The place had begun to grow and had a great spiritual platform. Here we're starting with this group of people here. Who knows what can happen? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have this place? Phil, this is a favorable season in God where we have all those empty chairs that are stacked up there filled and then you and I have to give up our seats because there's not enough room. I would expect you that have been here for long enough to have to stand if you have to so visitors can sit down. Amen? Amen. Let this be a successful season in God. Glory to God. Hot diggity dog. This is going to be a good time. Amen? <laughs> Woo! Glory, I better be quiet before I get too excited here. The beautiful thing, and as I finish up here this morning, the beautiful thing is that Jesus, when he spoke those words, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, so to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. He's quoting from Isaiah. And let me pick up as Isaiah goes on, because I love this passage here. And he says this, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. I tell you, that's you. That's you right there. Amen. To comfort all who mourn, provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Oh, what a, what a cry for this church. Amen. For the oil of joy. Instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Can you hear a song coming on? Yes. Pastor Tony's got to get behind the piano here for sure. I'll just spring it on him like that. He's just great at that. He's going, oh, what's, what's Ross up to? What's he? No, no, we're not doing, no, no, we're not doing no songs. No, we're doing garment of praise. Remember that old song? Yes. No, I haven't got any words for it, but you can know this. I'm sure you, enough of you know that the rest of you just hum along like you do know. You'll be polite and sing it anyway. Tony's going to help me sing it. He's going to sing it from the microphone. Give him his microphone there, guys. That'll be great. We finish up with this today. a new song you can take it back to your churches and let them learn it again Calvary might learn that new song <laughs> yeah yeah it's so old it's new again 
we often sing old songs like that and, and young people say, boy, I've never heard that before. Oh, it's a new song. <laughs> Praise God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this spectacular day. Lord, I thank you for Tony and Eunice and their great ministry that they have done. Lord, I thank you for the men and women that have helped support them over the time and men and women in this congregation here today that are here just especially for this occasion. Oh, Lord, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the morning tea we're about to enjoy. And might we, Lord, move.